Good morning, I'm Alexandra Gallier. I work as a gender scientist at the International Livestock Research Institute, ILVI. Um, I've joined ILVI in 2013 and um, I was in the CGIR before doing agricultural research for development with uh, from a gender angle. Um, and since I joined ILVI, um, I've been um, undertaking both strategic research on gender, which means research that really focuses um, on gender, such as issues of empowerment and so on. But we've been also doing much work on integrating gender uh, in the work of other scientists, including, for example, geneticists, uh, forage scientists, or animal health scientists. Um, since the, it is a number of years now, I would say, that the CGIR has been pushing uh, for gender to be more and more integrated in, uh, in the research that um, they are doing, uh, that we are doing. And um, this is for two main reasons, I would argue. One is that uh, the recognition that integrating gender in uh, agricultural research for development uh, uh, produces more effective technologies and uh, better science, and also the recognition that uh, this contributes to gender equity, and the fact that we are uh, addressing the um, small-scale most marginal farmers uh, means in a way that we have to look and support both women and men uh, within these groups. Um, the support for and the push for gender research has had uh, many, um, includes many aspects. Um, so there has been a push uh, from the donors and the CGIR all together to integrate gender in proposal writing and in the research that we do and to make sure we have an impact that uh, supports both women and men livestock farmers in the case of Ilri. Um, there has been also uh, specific institutional mechanisms to support the integration of gender in research. Uh, for example, there has been a strong push also to dedicate a percentage of the budget to gender research. Um, I think we have seen um, big progress. <laughs> there's been there's much more awareness about the need to uh, integrate gender and of course once there is the push from the donors and uh, also from the top levels to have gender in the proposals that we write and uh, in the in the outputs that we write, um, there is an increased awareness that we need to do this. Uh, some people feel pushed, <laughs> some people uh, embrace the issue. Uh, the, re the result, the end result, is that uh, there is much more work going on on gender uh, in agricultural research for development. Um, in the in the case of livestock and fish, which is the CFP uh, Ilri is leading, um, there has been a very strong support from the management to integrate gender. Um, and this has uh, included a number of initiatives, um, among which, for example, uh, the coaching of um, uh, non-gender scientists to integrate uh, a gender in their work. And this has come with some funds uh, that have been um, made available that of course allowed specific study to be undertaken, new stuff to be taken on board to support with the, with the research. Um, uh, we have had really exciting moments <laughs> and it is also, it's interesting in a way to see what mechanisms are working and what, what things can be improved. Um, one of the big learnings I think that we have um, had uh, through these initiatives is that um, um, we um, as I said, there's more and more awareness about the fact that we need to have gender. There is still some misconception about the fact that uh, doing gender analysis or gender research means having women included in whatever we are doing. Um, and in that sense, gender analysis is seen more like a, an activist kind of activity. So we still have to bring forward the argument that more strongly that gender analysis is about social analysis, about understanding gender relations and how they can affect technology needs and also the impact of what we are doing. Um, we still have to um, push forward the article that gender analysis is actually science, it's not just activism. And uh, that also uh, in a way has implications for the way we collaborate with other scientists. Um, we very much believe that integrating gender um, in agricultural research for development means really um, different scientists bringing in their own expertise um, uh, to produce better science. Um, and so through these um, experiences in integrating gender in various um, non-gender specific topics such as breeding, genetics, animal health, feeds and forages, um, 
we have uh, in a way created a situation where uh, everybody is enriched. So as gender scientists we know much more about um, feeding and forages and the same way uh, forage specialists know much more about um, gender and social scientists, sciences sorry, that they knew before. Um, we still have to in a way discuss better the boundaries. There is a perception that uh, um, you know we, we, we talk about Frankensteins. <laughs> we are not sure what we have created in a way. We all feel enriched by the experience but then again uh, I've worked a lot, I've just undertaken a study on, um, on the Ololili system which is a, a forage system in Tanzania used by the Maasai and we were looking very much at how to the studies that have been done until now have been um, gender blind and now we are trying to integrate gender in this study of um, a, a traditional Maasai system for forage because there is a lot of potential in the system to support the uh, forage shortages that is a major issue in dairy development in the dry areas of Tanda in Tanzania and we have uh, understood that there is a, a strong gender component in the management of the Ololili system and uh, that for this reason um, um, interventions that um, uh, want to work with the Ololili and for example introduce new um, wild grasses as forages need to make sure that they have a gender approach so that we understand the preferences for crops and varieties of both women and men. We understand the roles and responsibility in the livestock management and so on. And the study just revealed that there are strong implications in terms of food security and also in terms of uh, livelihood strategies. Some families where this traditional Maasai system of the Ololili is not working are going back to uh, more nomadic ways of life. Uh, and um, bringing a gender perspective into the Ololili uh, has revealed how women and men have different gender roles, how they are facing different constraints and they are also accessing different opportunities affected by gender relations um, and this I think will help us ma address much more um, um, any strategies or intervention that is trying to improve uh, the feeds and forage management, the management of the livestock overall as we said with an impact on food security and livelihood strategies. So but the result now the question now is okay so uh, now that we have you know uh, um, undertaken this collaborative research um, so I know much more about feeds and forage in Tanzania uh, but I, I don't feel like I can call myself a, a forage scientist um, and at the same time I think that the scientists the forage scientists that have been working with us have been enriched to understand how social sciences and gender analysis can be integrated in forage uh, analysis and forage scientists sciences but you know it is very unlikely that they themselves can call they can call themselves um, uh, gender scientists and the implications I think are uh, two <laughs> by recognizing that we get enriched by um, collaborative science um, we also understand that we need to keep collaborating along the whole process from you know the, 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 the creation and the design of a project all the way through the methodology and of course the research and the findings and the fieldwork and the analysis and the presentation so in a way the collaboration needs to go all the way through as gender scientists we are not just support scientists where we you know we give the hints and then people can go on with their own research and integrate gender on their own and do their own publications so gender is science as much as uh, you know genetics and animal health so the collaboration really needs to be um, a peer-to-peer -peer collaboration among scientists and the other implication is that with this push for having more and more uh, gender integrated in the work that we do we are having more and more scientists coming to our office and asking if we can help with the integration of gender in their proposals, also because donors are pushing for that, and also to integrate gender more and more into their research. And as a result, we have the feeling that we are having much more demand, and as a small team of gender scientists, um, we we need basically more, more support. So the question is, through this integration of gender in non-gender uh, scientists, in agri sciences, in agricultural research for development, have we actually created more uh, social sciences, more gender sciences? So we have created the need for more gender sciences. And I would argue for the second, I think we have created much more awareness, much more demand for um, gender research to be undertaken. And for this reason, you know, we will need uh, to expand our team.